this uh, dissertation was published 60 years of its initial publication, its defense, by a publication house in Istanbul. Can Sever bore the title of associate professor with a thesis, Problems of Modern Architecture, in 1960 at Istanbul University. <coughs> uh, well, I don't know if you have ch if you had a chance to read the abstract uh, prepared for this presentation. Uh, well. Among his early works, uh, one can count uh, the restoration of Sadullah Pasha mansion. This is a self-portrait by him, by the way. This is a picture of him from the 1980s. Well, this was among his early works. This is an old uh, seaside mansion and he restored this one and before I came here on Monday I talked to his daughter and son-in-law uh, and they told me that the restoration of this mansion has had a great impact on what he think as an architect uh, yeah, and also uh, this is a, a second major work by him it's the Anadolu Club Hotel building. It's in Büyükada, one of the islands in Istanbul. Uh, I will get back to these uh, to these later. Now I'm sh I'm going to shortly introduce them to you. And also Karatepe Open Air Museum, 1957. Very lucrative time for him as an architect, 1950s and 60s. I mean, and then. We have Turkish Historical Society building, which won uh, Alhan Award for Architecture. This is another picture from the interior. A late picture of the same building from another, uh, taken from another apartment. Uh, well, uh, also, this is Bezit Square pedestrianization project, a much debated, uh, pro one of the mo most debated projects by him. Um, and in 1960s and 70s, he worked for municipality and other institutions and engaged in city plans. Well, uh, I will get back. Ertegün House is uh, one of them. This was also a restoration, but not just a restoration. He added a building uh, to this. Uh, and, um, well, this is th these are pictures from inside. <coughs> and this is another... Uh, work by him. Uh, this is Demir Holiday Village Project. This is an also Allahan reward uh, award winner project. And although I have shown these to you, uh, most of his projects remained on paper. Uh, a famous man of literature and biographer writer Bashar Ayvazoglu describes him uh, that think of an Ottoman Empire which built its modernity without experiencing Tanzimat and its aftermath. Can Sever is such a man. Uh, well, much of what we know about Can Sever uh, is mostly dated to 19. What we, what he has written, or what we, what he has talked about in 1980s uh, and 90s. <coughs> uh, well, it, well, some argue that this 1980s was, were a turning point uh, for him, that he moved towards a more culturally oriented uh, uh, perspective 
uh, but not this was not just a perspective this also influenced his uh, choice of materials architectural materials uh, in constructions well uh, uh, a study by Hal Ibrahim Duzani uh, notes that John Sever heavily used stones after this time uh, well Maybe one should look at the psychology of the 1980s. Uh, well, Ahan architecture reverts began at that time, and in Asia there were debates how to communi uh, communicate with the past forms, how to use them in uh, uh, in today's uh, uh, constructions, and also uh, there is another point that John Sever's, John Sever's emphasis on culture and identity became more manifest in the 1980s because this might be a reaction to the constructivist and postmodern uh, uh, attitudes in architecture. Uh, well, he was already reading, I mean, well, this is this is a matter of debate whether John Sever really turned to culture and cultural forms and its his own past after the 1980s. Uh, some argue the other way around uh, and say that uh, well, if you trace back the early works by John Sever, you can find uh, the signs of tradition in his forms. Well, there is, I mean, it is, it is not really easy to talk about Johnson because uh, he is an academician and also an architect and he uh, extensively uh, draws up his ideas on um, some philosophers and other thinkers. Well, I mean, this, this is, this can be seen in the early formations of his uh, intellectual personality. Uh, during high school times, Jan Samar was reading the works by uh, Ibn al-Arabi, uh, Nietzsche, Goethe, and other Western and Eastern philosophers, and was, was trying to come up with something, a kind of synthesis maybe. Uh, well, he is influenced from Ernst Dietz, uh, and a famous Austrian uh, scholar. Uh, <coughs> and he, he's influenced from his work on genetic, the genetics of aesthetic. Uh, and based on, also he's influenced from Titus Bucard's uh, uh, writings on Sufism and the principles and methods of the sacred art. Well, he's going to refer a lot to this concept, this, the concept of sacred art, I mean. Well, uh, based upon the idea of genetic aesthetics, uh, I mean, he, he thought that there are different strata of existence, such as material, biological, spiritual, and moral. And there is the structure of the whole, well, the relationship between peace and the whole, the organic and cumulative wholeness, are a must for an architect to consider while designing or constructing something. Well, he believed that to construct an architectural work is a great responsibility. Because when you don't like a novel, you just don't read it. If you don't like uh, a music, you can turn a deaf ear. But once a building is constructed, people will have to live with it for years and perhaps for generations. So he believed that architects must design beautiful and respectful buildings. And this respect is shown not only towards the, his, call, his or her colleagues, but also to society, to nature, to God, and everything included. Well, he believed that consciousness is a key for an architect. Human beings are rational actors with their deliberate choices. They drive meanings of their actions mostly from beliefs. 
and this can also be not on, doesn't has necessarily have to be a belief but also a traditional identity also possible John Sauer had an endless optimism for the future and he had a strong belief that ideas had has precedence over actions and uh, this is the reason why, first of all, he thought that he had to, or somebody's had to educate architects first. Um, well, um, he thought higher the level of consciousness of an architect, the more the realization of this, of this responsibility towards society and nature. Well. Perspective, I mean, this perspective brings the duty of beautifying the world. Uh, well, he says what turns human creators into human beings is the feeling of responsibility. While people, including architects, must realize that they are the pearl of creation, and because of that, they lay this lays the burden of attentiveness to various strata of existence. Uh, John Sever opposes to the idea that the law Islam has something has bestowed something distinctive to architecture. Well, Islamic architecture cannot be reduced to a mere replication or application of traditional local forms. And it is it reflects overall attitude of Muslim belief. <coughs> uh, well, architects and other practitioners join the process of construction as rational actors, and they participate in the process. Um, but while they are designing, a tradition or a religion or whatever belief exercises a hidden authority over them. And there is an inextricable relationship. This is also related to genetic as theory of genetics of aesthetics. There is an inextricable relationship between what we believe in and what we construct. Deliberately or not, everything we produce is a reflection of our beliefs. So this is where the responsibility uh, comes from. Uh, well, and his I don't know, maybe among you there are uh, people who know if it, there are architects or academicians who think in the same way. Uh, but because of that, I mean, if the architectural works are reflections of what we believe or what we think, then architecture cannot entirely be belong to the realm of aesthetics and technology, but it should belong to the field of ethics and religion. I think this is a revolutionary idea offered by him. So what is a real work of art? Um, it's a vital question. He believes that human actions can turn into a fetish if it disregards what the divine will demands from us. While well, architects may produce objects reflecting their personal pride and merely aiming at self-satisfaction. <coughs> However, according to John Sever, moral values such as modesty and solemnity should be dominant during material selection and the actual construction. Otherwise, architectural structure would serve merely as a tempting factor. Well, John Sauer had real difficulties with the creator artist, uh, a creator architect, creator artist type of architect. Uh, the attitudes was combined, when this attitude was combined with the market realities of attracting cost customers and by pass bypassing legal requirements to profit more and personal pretentiousness, that all end up with cultural pollution and spatial detachments and incoherencies. Well, a true Islamic attitude would lead to listen to the voice of nature, that if you are able to truly understand the order of things got manufactured, 
Well, in an interview in 1996, Jan Sever talked about the Chukurova region that gives a yield for three times a year. The reason why he gave this example was that such a lucrative land was occupied with factories now polluting the environment and killing the possibility of farming there. Jan Sever finds it very un-Islamic and interprets this as a turning a deep ear to nature. <coughs> Well, he was in the opinion that personal and superficial pretentiousness of today's architecture, he was writing mostly in 1980s and 1990s, causing a cultural pollution, unprecedented in history, and that he found this architectural attitude even less meaningful than constructing with the purpose of amusing or surprising people. Here, John Sarah's overall critic of cultural pollution is directed more towards the cultural alienation in Turkey that dissociated from people from their cultural links and pasts in the name of Westernization. Well, according to Jan Savar, there are strata of existence, as I said, that material, biological, social, spiritual, and moral. Sometimes, instead of biological and social, he shortly says biosocial, and also adds another dimension that is technological. He argues a building constructed merely by taking material, technological, biosocial levels of existence into consideration cannot go beyond of being a mere technological success. It doesn't really earn the quality of an architectural work, since this requires to encompass all strata, all aspects of the existence. Jansawa asserts Islamic architecture essentially rejects the conception of modern comfort and tells Islamic architecture doesn't allow wastefulness and unnecessary expenditures. And we are going to see how practically, uh, what this, what practically this mean, means. Uh, well, the climate conditions are controlled by passive methods in Islamic architecture. He gives the example of window sizes, for example, that are de designed optimally in accordance with the climate requirements. Then Jan Sarai refers to an article in the Quran about how bad the wastefulness is and criticizes wastefulness and arrogance. So, how does Jan Sarai define Islamic art? To him, it is obeying the truth with no ifs and buts, staying away from wrongdoing, submission, modesty, conforming to the structure of existence, seeming as you are, contending oneself with less, consciousness towards God. That means to build things not to impress others. Such attitudes have been the source of formal expressions in Islamic arts, he believes. Uh, well, as creation of every object is divine manifestation through which art gains a religious character, likewise human-made objects too acquire a, uh, a sacred attribute. Well, he tries to connect now the relationship between architect as being the representative of God in the earth and also the God-created nature. Well, uh, he, he believes that in Islamic art, natural objects preserve their inherent features and qualities. Uh, well, <coughs> maybe this perspective can be criticized by arguing that is every creation is a manifestation of, is a manif divine manifestation. When, why, uh, not the ones designed by the constructivists or quote unquote spoiled art spoiled architects. Well. Here, John Sarah's main point is to argue that architects are not creators who can design whatever they will, who can choose any material for any place they wish. There are limits for architecture. Uh, by creation, objects are given imminent qualities. The architect must discover them. He, is he or she is expected to communicate with the language of creation includes paying attention to climate, to ecology, to topography of construction, consent of the people uh, who live either in and around these structures or pay attention to the relations and tensions between the contra 
construction materials to be used together. He expects architects to have such sensitivities. Um, while I mean, he, he rejects egocentric attitudes in architecture and he believes that such egocentric attitudes increase the complexity of <coughs> architecture. Well, harmonizing with nature is a must for him. Let me give you an example. When a piece of land was invested with the desert locusts in 1989, local authorities offered aerial insecticide treatment. But John Sarah opposed to this, uh, as it may have caused pollution of green areas and the sea. His solution was to bring a truck load of chickens to destroy the grasshoppers there in a quite natural way, and it worked. Uh, a similar inclination of him can be seen in his carefulness to construct buildings by paying utmost attention to local conditions of geography and using the locally found material. Uh, John Savage uh, criticized approaching the land and city from the perspective of bureaucrats or technocrats or paying too much attention to the bureaucratic procedures, instead of it weaving the land and city as manifestations of divine perfection and consequently showing due respect it deserves. <coughs> um, another quote. Islamic architecture is movement in columns, has the clarity of finitude, modesty and naturalness in expression. Rather than being dramatic or compelling, it is for beauty and ornamentation, he says. Uh, well, a common feature of Islamic arts, according to John Savar, draws a colorful and exuberant picture full of optimism, confidence and cheerfulness. Uh, well, in practice, our beliefs exercise an authority over the planimetric organizations of a Muslim house that reflects family patterns like privacy, respect to elderly and children's education. Well, in an interview to Midiet magazine in 1981, he defines the architecture so. Architecture is a discipline which organizes the relationship between human and being by taking material and spiritual strata into consideration. Now, let me give you some concepts that John Sever refers to. And think of these concepts and how, what kind of an influence can, they can have on an architectural design. Quietness. Objectivity, timidity, piety, inert expression, reverence, honesty, simplicity, optimism, elegancy, submission, mellowness, respectfulness, dignity, and enjoyment. <coughs> uh, well, the idea of Architectonics is central in John Severin, how John Severin thinks and how he constructs, how he designs. Well, for example, in one of his works, the Demir Houses, he says that Demir Houses never claim to be a perfect architectural work from which nothing can be extracted and to which nothing can be added. It is built on a conception of totality. Okay. This is the Demir Houses. Uh, this site is composed of elements that are edible to one another, and the pieces preserve the particular uh, personality in the whole. They, are, they don't assimilate uh, until the point where they lose their distinctive features, because John Sever believes that this is something to do with, with which God wants from us because every individual <coughs> uh, has their just since every individual has his or her own distinctive future, architectural designs must also pay attention to this rule. Uh, well, things come together. Uh, 
in pieces uh, in uh, Turgut Cansever's general works. Uh, and these pieces must have a relation to whole, I mean, they cannot say different songs. They have to say the same song, but they, by keeping their distinctive features, they must be part of the whole also. Well, uh, reflections of this idea, I mean, unity between peace and whole, we can see uh, that there has to be a balance between center and locality, which means there is there has to be a flexibility in this relationship and maybe because of that John Sera criticized the absolute functionalism that become helpless when needs change in 20 or 30 years Ottoman house for example was not designed as a work of art that is com something complete or frozen but something edible and extractable that doesn't change its beauty but uh, it, it can change its function. Uh, well, I remember from my ex my own experience that we have a hundred years old house in our village, uh, and uh, this house uh, is composed of rooms. Every uh, <coughs> every one of these rooms called a house because it's enough for a family to live in it small family uh, and there are places which deliberately left empty and when it is needed these uh, places are filled with new rooms and when the family the structure of family changes uh, then they can combine two uh, rooms in a one big room or they can just divide them and make three rooms out of these two. And this, John Sever thinks that this is uh, the pattern how uh, a mind uh, operated. Uh, there was such kind of a flexibility, which first of all material allowed us to do, and but not just the material, there is also the mentality of this flexibility. Well, an absolute functionalist mind wouldn't Consider that. Uh, well, from a perspective, what John Sava tried to do is to theorize a historical practice. Well, of course, he's not a historian and he is not looking for the historical facts, but he just wants to uh, take good examples out of that. Um, well, and he believes. I mean, he believes, really believes, that space is something more or less objectively uh, perceivable. And <coughs> he just tries to find the repeating patterns and the special uh, organization of Ottoman towns and cities. Architectural localism is, as I just mentioned, is the central concept in John Sever's thinking. Uh, it means to use materials most suitable to the climate and most easily accessible. Well, for example, if there is an abundant amount of stone, then the houses, he believes, even today, uh, I mean, if he would be alive today, he would certainly defend the same. The houses should then be constructed out of stone. If there is an abundant number of trees, then houses should be constructed out of wooden. Well, he says, finding locally produced architectural solutions to material problems that appear on biosocial level of existence also means, from an Islamic perspective, being in rapport with the divine will as reflected to creation. For example, John Sever finds it very unreasonable and un-Islamic at the same time to construct glass-covered buildings in places like Erzurum, an eastern city of Turkey famous with its tsunami and cold winters. This means to challenge the world, according to him, challenge nature, challenge the given order of things. Well, if God 
gives a certain characteristic to a geography, then you have to abide with it. And you have to choose your construction to your design in accordance with it. Uh, Well, based square uh, is one of the uh, important matters of discussion. Well, this is uh, this is the based square. Let me briefly explain what he tried to do. Uh, well, the pedestrianization project in 1950s. Uh, well, he believes that uh, there is something wrong with this square. What is that wrong thing? Uh, the, this is the gigantic main door of the Harvey uh, Ministry of War. Okay, and you have the building here. Now it's a part of Istanbul University. And this is the best mosque, and there is a library here, and there is mattress in here. And this, um, instead of this place, there was a palace built during the time of Fat Mehmet, Fat Sultan Mehmet, the Mehmet II conqueror. And this palace was demolished in the 1940s, and instead of these. Uh, uh, these gigantic front doors was made to the uh, building, ministry building. Well, the problem he sees is that there is something unusual here. Normally, in every Ottoman Turkish settlement project, the center uh, is the mosque. Okay, the mosque is at the center. But look at the axis that the door draws. Almost there are 45 degrees of uh, axis to the, the, to the direction of the Qibla. Well, he thinks he relates this to the, ton, to, to the Tanzimat elite, uh, who wanted to move the Ottoman Empire from uh, its own culture to, uh, to something much more westernized one. And the design was, uh, he thinks, that done by uh, uh, Mustafa um, Rashid, I'm sorry, who was in the guy. I mean, topography is something like this, you know, from up to down. And this is, this is a closed place. Now, they're changing it. What? Well, This is the original, to today's uh, form. It's now being renovated once again. But this shows how uh, John, Severs, John Severs' mind uh, I mean, operates. Well, he believes that there is a culturally correct form of things which were applied in history. And the Tanzimat was uh, uh, Tanzimat want to, to change this uh, centuries old historical pattern and now he, he thinks that by this way he's going to correct it. Well, for the locality uh, I think it's also important to note that when the wood material of this building uh, was going to be applied and took John Savar ordered to build the material to come one year before their uh, application because uh, he thought that the wood material must wait for a year in Ankara and must get acclimatized to, uh, uh, to the geography and the climate. Well, he believed that 
uh, local people must be part of the construction. And he gives the example uh, of quarters. <coughs> well, and two great blows to the local administration in our history, John Sauer talks. One is the abolishing of guilds during the Tanzimat, which eliminated the standards, and the other, the municipal law of 1928, which ended the local quarter organization, Mahalli uh, Teshkidatza. Well, he believes guilds were uh, the main source and providers of architectural ethics uh, in practice by enabling the transmission of values. Well, and also uh, he gives the example of Italian Communist Party, uh, which both examined and applied the model of quarters in Albania. <coughs> uh, well, what attracted the members of the Italian Communist Party was the ability of inhabitants of a quarter to make decisions about the fate of the quarters. Those of historians among you know very well how a quarter functioned in Ottoman history, how powerful, strong it was. Uh, John Sever's chief purpose was to criticize the extreme centralization of decision-making process during the Tanzimat. He was in favor of preserving autonomous character of quarters. While architectural solutions produced for localities must be taken locally and local demands must be put into consideration. John Sauer, of course, is not against the existence of a central authority. He likes the idea of hierarchy, but he's against the disregarding of local demands and expectations. He expects locals to join the process of construction, as I said. For example, what he said for his project of Sivas Kalar, the quarter. Now this project is on its way after many years. And uh, we're going to see what's going to come out. Well, he says the main feature that determines uh, the settlement pattern was the quarter and house that made of building groups to a form of collectivity in the quarter through preserving their individual features. Artigan House, for the Artigan House, he says uh, he was inspired from the locality itself. I mean, the arbors in bodrum houses and coffee houses that are covered with dead branches of trees and carry five pillars. Uh, well, very interestingly, he doesn't believe that the, by the way, this is from uh, <coughs> holiday, the Demir Holiday Village Project. One of the most important things may be that these buildings, uh, although new constructions, seem as if they had always been there. Nothing unusual, nothing unfriendly to nature. These are made up of stones. These are massive uh, blocks uh, and part of, again, nature. And they don't seem anything usual. But instead of these buildings, think of a glass covered uh, one. And think, compare them if they both give the same impression or not. Well, he was, I mean, this is also uh, related to John Sever's architectural localism that he didn't believe a central dome mosques was a progressive progressed forms of uh, mosque buildings uh, and well he speaks quite well of Bursa Ulujami's multiple uh, dome dam this one this is the old one but he prefers this also one of the restorations but I mean before the restoration this Antalya Karakash mosque was almost demolished, entirely demolished. 
I think I have some ten minutes. Yeah. Well, he makes a lot of comparisons between East and West, uh, and culture and uh, mosque and cathedral. For example, and also he makes them some critics in uh, in his own culture and. He criticized, the, as I said, Westernization, and you know the, the Baroque architecture had some influence uh, in the Ottoman Empire, and one of the brilliant examples of this Baroque architecture is shown in uh, Nur Osmani Mosque, right? And also a mosque after uh, its uh, restoration. Um, but he doesn't like these kind of Western-influenced uh, mosques, and uh, for example, he compares Nur Osmania and Selimiye. This is Nur Osmania Mosque, mid 18th century, and inside, and this is a Selimiye Mosque. Okay, and well, he thinks the former Nur Osmania Mosque. Uh, is designed to demonstrate the grandeur of load burning architectural elements. Look at the cows. I mean, look at the arches. And they are there with their masculinity, right? You can see them. But when you look at the Selimia Mosque, you don't get the same impression, although this photograph is taken from a bit afar. Uh, so this, he says, when you look at the Selimiya Mosque, you see a quietness, inward, static, and thus respectful expression. But this uh, tries to show the elements, how powerful the construction is. I think this is, this is a major characteristic which influenced the Ottoman architecture of 19. Uh, 18th and 19th centuries. And he compares mosque with a cathedral, for example, uh, a local example. Uh, well, he says, when you go into a mosque, the whole space is open to you, and you feel no pressure that leads you to a certain direction. But unlike this, when you go into a cathedral or a church, there is a hierarchy clearly established in the space itself, and when you go into a mosque, or into a church, or a cathedral, that space directs you to somewhere, specifically, definitely to somewhere. And, but well, this is how different civilizations or cultures produce their spatial attitudes. Uh, well, I, I need to emphasize that Islamic, in John Sever's terms, is not solely related to the text, but it is related to the inherent God-given feature of nature. Well, for example, a German or a Russian city can be more Islamic than a Turkish, Iranian, or an Egyptian city. On one occasion, he deemed Frankfurt, for example, a German city that was in total more than 20 million people, but in the form of sparse and distributed settlements, and whose upkeeping costs lower than Istanbul, thanks to primarily to the spatial feature. Very provocatively, he argues that Frankfurt, an Islamic city, while Istanbul almost an infidel city because of this. Or, he says, Russian-made Istanbul-like houses are Islamic when compared to basalt houses of Anatolia, and they are both equally Islamic. And when you think that John Sever distanced himself from Islamist political currents of <coughs> the 1980s of Turkey, this is something important to keep in mind. Uh, there are things to say, but uh, just, just, I'm going to underline two more points and I will end this presentation. Well, he says that 
Ottoman world view depend on the idea of relativity. Nisbi view. Okay, Sultan Ahmed and Mir Mir Sultan mosques, for example, the window proportions of the houses around these mosques were deliberately made smaller to give the impression that mosques appear bigger than actually they are. So you could do this in, in two ways. Either you could have gigantic construct, mosque constructions, or you can use such kind of tricks or ways, let's say, to do to give the same impression. Frugality, kanatkarlik, was seen as an imminent part of John Sarah's concept of Islam art. Because of that, he, he prepared some city settlement projects and believed that 64 to 74 square meters are enough for people to live in instead of 100 or more square meters. Okay. Uh, Well, and also, lastly, the soul of standards. He, he said that <coughs> like meters in poetry and makams in music, there were standards for architecture. That John Sarah call, Sarai calls the soul of standards, and it's something crucial to ethics. Uh, there were, throughout history, he says, three to five types of windows. And John Sarah is not alone in that regard, and he refers to famous French architect Le Corbusier and American architect Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, well, I mean, just to sum up, what John Sarah tries to do is to bring ethics back in the architecture, and he argues for prevalence of mor moral values in this field, and he wants architecture to be a matter of belief and individual and social responsibility. An architectural work must have limitation, must be perceivable, simple, modest, and humble, and must take different strata of existence into consideration while designing. Uh, thank you very much for your patience and listening. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Yostichman, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we have approximately 25 minutes for your question and comments. Um, please welcome and uh, uh, please also mention your name and affiliation if you have. So please. Thank Yes, please. Hello. <coughs> uh, this is Taha Cicic from Soas. Uh, my question is about. Uh, the relationship between the, his projects and the practice of city planning in Turkey. Mm. Uh, he's a conservative, and uh, many conservative uh, municipalities are available in Turkey. How did his uh, projects influence, or any, is there an influence uh, by, uh, over mm -hmm. the municipality, uh, the actions of? municipalities regarding the city planning yeah. uh, in the past or now or in future mm -hmm. do you expect anything? <laughs> <laughs> yes there is of course um, well that's a good question I mean we have a conservative intelligent architect who uh, he established I mean uh, a good intellectual background, a good source of justifi justifiability in doing things. Uh, but, and we have conservative government and conservative mayors. Uh, but there is a market reality also. Uh, well, it's going to be one of the great mysteries of today's Turkey, maybe, why these two could not get together. Um, well, now the Sivas mayor is c going to apply Sivas Kalyar, the uh, quarter project. Uh, it, the, the project has been approved and, and after years now it is being revised and waiting on the table to be applied. 
Um, and but moreover, much more important, I think, than this, is that John Sever's ideas, I think, strong and appealing, appealing to conservative uh, middle class young generations. Maybe it, his ideas is going to have exercise its influence in the coming decades. Well, look, for example, <coughs> I prepare this. Uh, this is done afterwards. Uh, the, the authors of this project uh, are his daughters and his son-in-law, uh, Emine and Mehmet Oun. This is Oun, Oun, architect, architecture. Um, well, these also co these two were the co-authors of Demir Houses, uh, where he uh, won the third and last Alhan Award. And this is these are pictures from Almaria. The same. Now there are follows. Well, Cyprus Technical University project by Ahmed Yilmaz and Ibrahim Akiyit, uh, who think themselves followers of Toby Johnson, right? designed this. Uh, well, you can see clear influences, the eaves on the windows, or look at the uh, construction density and the sparseness. Uh, or a couple of years ago, Martin Article University students uh, get together and they discussed how to realize John Severs ideals in different places, for example. And these are pictures, some these some pictures from the projects offered. Of course they are just young uh, architects. But you see the idea here. I mean, you don't see ten, eight or ten stories buildings now common in, in Turkey, unfortunately. You see different use of space, uh, two or three story houses, probably having their own small gardens. And answer to your question, well, so far, very interestingly, uh, John Sever's ideas and proposals haven't been taken into consideration. Uh, due respect was not paid, uh, but he's certainly going to have an influence in today, uh, in in futures coming uh, architecture architects. Uh, uh, this is my hope and expectation also.